hasn't been in such a rush in the morning that you start to fry your eggs but accidentally end up with something that feels like plastic in your mouth. It's no good. Well, never make that mistake again because here is how you can use science to fry the perfect egg every single time. When you first crack an egg into a warm pan, it's all liquid like and runny but we know by adding heat, we can actually make it into a more solid-like or elastic texture. And this is really several microscopic changes happening to the proteins in the egg whites and egg yolks. And there are different proteins in the egg whites versus the yolk, but we can think of each of these proteins initially sort of as a necklace. So just like many tiny beads make up a necklace into a long strand, Proteins are made up by many amino acids to form a long strand or a long molecule. And in raw eggs or initially, these proteins are called globular proteins. And that's because the protein is sort of just folded in or curled in upon itself. It kind of forms a big glob. You could think of this if you were wearing a necklace, but you just threw it on your dresser. It might sort of get all entangled with itself and sort of all balled up. These are the globular proteins. But when heat is added, this entirely changes the game because as more heat hits the proteins, they start to denature, which just means the proteins start to unravel and open up. Denaturation just means the proteins lose their native structure as those globular shapes. And when this happens and the proteins unwind, they actually sort of wiggle around and sort of get entangled with each other. These long proteins start to form sort of larger knots or tangles. So think of this like if you have a bunch of necklaces in your jewelry box, they might form one larger knot and it's hard to separate one necklace from another. And this is what proteins do as we heat them in the eggs. And when we have a bunch of proteins interacting, they actually form a network. And this network becomes more and more strong as proteins are added to it, that it sort of immobilizes other components, other molecules. And this is what we know as a gel. So the proteins in eggs actually set up a gel network. Now, how do we control these proteins to get a soft, tender egg? It comes down to a balance of time and temperature. And the egg whites are more sensitive to heat than the egg yolks. So the proteins you find in the egg whites will start denaturing or unraveling at a temperature of 140 degrees. And by the time they reach 149 degrees Fahrenheit, they will all be fully denatured. So you can tell when the egg white is denaturing because that's when it turns that opaque white and it stops flowing. And then you have the proteins in the egg yolk and these can put up with more heat. So these proteins will not start denaturing until you reach 149 degrees Fahrenheit and aren't fully denatured until 158 degrees. And so they, they need more heat to denature than the egg whites. And something to keep in mind is that denaturation and aggregation or that formation of the gel does not happen instantaneously. The proteins need time to unwind and form contacts with each other to set up that network. And this is exactly why frying eggs at lower temperatures is better because you give the proteins more time to denature and contact each other and set up that gel. And you do this without even going to those high temperatures on the denaturation range. So it's better to slowly cook the eggs to let those proteins unravel at lower temperatures. Where people tend to go wrong is cooking the eggs at too high a temperature. And what this means is two different detrimental things. One, when you cook eggs at higher temperatures, some of the water evaporates, which makes more room for that gel network, those, that protein network to sort of get more compact and become more dense. So once that water leaves, the gel network can become even 
tighter. And the second thing is that when you heat the eggs at higher temperatures, they actually go above the necessary denaturation range for the proteins. And if they're above that needed temperature for denaturation, it actually means all the proteins denature, which makes an even, even stronger gel because there's more proteins making contacts. And this sort of basically two ways that make a stronger and more compact protein gel is what gives that rigid and firm texture when you cook eggs at these high temperatures. Fried eggs aren't the type of breakfast you can rush because you need to keep that temperature low to get that soft texture. And if you crank up that temperature too much, those pesky proteins are going to get you and you'll have something that's more rough and tough to eat. I'll talk to you next time. Hey everyone, thank you for watching. If you have any questions about the foods you eat, leave them in the comments section. I'm always looking for new ideas for videos. See you later.